showdown Thursday in the ACC. This game is available in high definition on ESPN HD presented by Phillips. It's deja vu in Chapel Hill. The North Carolina Tar Heels are number one in the ACC and set to play a long time foe in front of a sellout crowd. The Tar Heels lead the ACC by one game over Duke and Wake Forest. The Wolfpack at three and four, desperately needing a win to get back to 500 with a brutal stretch in their schedule coming up. Len Elmore and Mike Patrick with you, Lenny. How about the Star Wars? Well, you look at Julius Hodge, among the most versatile players in the nation, and Rashad McCants is scoring is down, but he's more team-oriented now than ever before in his career, and it shows with his team's record. Both ball clubs will open in a three-guard offense. Bethel is the lineup change for North Carolina State as he works his way back into the starting lineup. Felton McCants and McCannuel will go in the backcourt for North Carolina with Williams and May up front. Curb Sendek, now in his ninth year as the head coach in Raleigh, North Carolina, only five and 13 against the Heels in his tenure. And Roy Williams for North Carolina, who is not feeling well, has a fever and a sore throat. But by the time he finishes his 17th year as a coach, he will be the leading winning coach in the history of college basketball through 17 seasons. This is his second year at North Carolina, 36 and 13. You talked to him earlier today, not feeling well, huh? No, not really, and he's very gracious. Didn't want to spread the germs, apologize for not shaking hands. And Roy, I appreciate that. They are really psyched here at the Smith Center. 21,750 ready to go. Oh, well, it's good to be number two. This place is exciting. Number two in the nation, and it's no secret, Mike, North Carolina State does not want to run with Carolina. Look for them to try to use all the time in their half-court set. I mean, number two in the nation, number one in the ACC really seems like old times here. May takes the opening tap for the heels and gives it up to Felton. NC State in man-to-man. -man. Felton, the leading assist man in the ACC, picked up initially by Tony Bethel, the junior out of Fort Washington, Maryland. You know, I sit here and I watch the Wolfpack play man-to-man, -man, and it's really nobody you can point to. Carolina with the best starting five in America. Hodge goes inside, and the miss by Andrew Brackman, who had a good look from about three feet. And usually when you play defense, you want to take somebody away, force somebody else to beat you. There's and nobody Rashad who, McCants gets the first bucket. There's nobody that you can rely on not to perform for that Carolina starting five. Absolutely. And they have all been extremely unselfish this year. Eftemoff wheeling inside, and he is fouled by Jawad Williams. That will be number one on the senior from Cleveland. Well, Rashad McCants, again, he can beat you outside. You got to respect that three-point shot, but still upper body strength capable of finishing in a paint. Wide open, Bethel for three. Too strong. May, nice job of blocking out inside. Here comes Felton with that great speed. Hodge checked him. May backing in, and that is almost an impossible matchup for Eftemoff at 6-7. Well, especially when Carolina spreads the floor and allows May to just work from side to side inside that paint. Hodge thought about it. Hasn't shot very much from outside. Hasn't shot well. Backdoor cut by Hodge. And a beautiful pass by Aftemoff, which is the first thing that struck everybody when he came to the NC State program. What a great passer he was. May, speaking of great passes, got it inside to Williams, and he's fouled. Well, again, you talk about Sean May in the middle. When the floor is spread, and you take a look here, look how much room he has to work there in the middle. There's nobody on either side, no help. Ball coming from the top, so there's absolutely no help side. And after all, playing behind him, that's an automatic. 
foul was on Eftemar. Jack Emanuel, and that's a blocking foul on Ingen Atsur, who was not feeling well. And on the offense, NC State knows that they're going to get denied. And right here, you see Haas just give the ball to Eftemar, steps out, goes black, back door. As Manuel tries to overplay, you're going to see that a lot with NC State. If Carolina wants to continue to deny the pass, guys are going to go back door. May again step them off again. Can't hit it this time, and Brackman clears for NC State. If you're not familiar with the Wolfpack, they run a Princeton-like offense. A lot of movement. Everybody's a good passer. Everybody can run. But the question is, Mike, can you get it when you're passing? Can you get it to your target? Carolina loves to the overplay. They force you to put it on the floor like Brackman's doing. Hence the turnover. Now you got a 6'10 freshman dribbling the basketball, turning into the point guard on that possession, and he turns it over. See, I expect NC State to have Eftem off at the top a lot more right now, him being the trigger guy in their offense in the middle and try to take away the Carolina help. He and Hodge are certainly the best two passers. We are reaching, I believe, on Bethel, and it will be number one on Tony Bethel. NC State down a couple of players tonight. Levi Watkins is still out with a knee injury, and Cameron Bennerman hurt an elbow. He'll be out for about another week. So they're a little thin coming in. McCants looked like he made up his mind. He was going to fire on that possession. Got the basket at 6-2 heels. Heft him off. Double team on him and foul. Well, Mike, you talk about him making up his mind. The idea is right when he received, right here, he sees the double team. And once the double team left and he had no place to go, he's in the paint. And Rashad McCann has enough confidence to feel he can elevate over the defense. Hodge, offensive foul on last year's ACC Player of the Year. And there was a situation where I think Hodge made up his mind. It was his turn to shoot. Right, and a little different result that time. Hodge not able to shake the defender as McCants did when he received it. And this foul will be on Brackman as he went out to double-team Felton. Well, once again, we talk about defense and Julius Hodge. Look at the hand along the ball now. If he had it in the face, the officials might call a foul. Hodge just forces the issue there. You're allowed to put your hand and shadow the ball, but you can't put it in the offensive player's face. Well, nice pass by Felton. Manuel with a rare shot, and he knocks it down. A great start for the Heels. I tell you, though, if you're looking for small victories, if you're NC State, yes, Carolina's scoring, but what you're doing is you're making them take some time in doing it unless you turn it over. NC State will keep the ball. They got a timeout. It used to be if you slid, it was traveling. They don't call that anymore. They'll let you do that now as long as you don't roll over. Yeah, they call it essentially incidental to possession. You know, your momentum carries you, and right there, that's a good call by the officials. He didn't roll over, didn't try to get up. He received possession, and incidental to that possession, his speed allowed him or forced him to continue to slide. It was incidental to the possession. He didn't try to do something new. And I think that's a, a great change in the interpretation of that rule. North Carolina, number four in the country, 11 steals a game. Two years ago, and for a period of about three or four years, this was a team that didn't get any steam. Well, they're playing a much different brand of defense. The brand that I remember back in the 70s, Dean Smith would employ the overplay. You take away the wings, you play up high, force the guys to go back door. A lot of teams can't handle it. Jack Emanuel's basket that appeared to be a three has been changed to a two, and it's eight to two Tar Heels. Atzer, who has been their best long-range shooter in the last few games, has one rim out, and here comes Felton. Great change, but he missed the shot. Bethel comes back for NC State. This is North Carolina's tempo and a steal for Felton. Especially the open floor turnovers, just like that one. Felton end-to-end, -end, it's 10-2. 
Actually, Mike, you can live with turnovers that force the other team to inbound it because you can set up your defense. But Carolina in the open floor, you turn it over in the open floor in transition, they do it lightning quick. Amstamoff had it stuffed. That was tremendous defense by Jawad Williams, who stood his ground. And Manuel on the run, it's 12 to 2. Herb Sendak, I think, desperately needs a timeout, and he's making no motion to get one. His team is being run out of this building right now. Hodge on a double team, nice backdoor cut, got the pass. And look how quickly Carolina's back on you, even after a make. McCants draws a foul. That's going to be number two on Brackman. We've got a timeout, 15.09 to go first half. The lead is eight. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Bassett Furniture Direct's all-new John Elway Home Collection and SUV.com. Great start for North Carolina. The heels on top of NC State 12-4 early here at home, and they've got everything just the way they want it, Lynn. Well, they certainly do, and it's not really going the way Herb Sendak drew it up. And one of the problems is this point guard has to recognize what's going on. He sees everybody on the floor right now, passes Felton, but Felton's just going to come around the side here as Bethel starts to look at the basket. you got to know where this guy is particularly. Ray Felton is one of those guys that is quick, understands how to get behind people, how to disrupt offenses, and obviously it turns into a basket. Tony Bethel... You know, he's been sick, missed four games, really starting to get back into the swing of things, but he's got to be aware of who's on the floor and where they are. McCants hits the free throw. The heels starting off on fire. They've hit six out of eight shots in the floor. And Cedric Simmons, number 33, is in for the first time for the Wolfpack. Simmons, a freshman. The Associated Press North Carolina High School Player of the Year who's had limited minutes this year. Hodge the lob ahead. Simmons got the roll. You got a lead like, from Gavin Grant, the freshman. You got to like the way that Grant attacked the pressure right there once they got an advantage break. And you got to do that. You can't sit back. May. And Grant, who had been starting, had a pretty good freshman year. He was out with the basketball. Grant went to the same school in the Bronx that produced Julius Hodge. Hey, Raymond Tide. Grant looks like a very confident player. There's Hodge. Little scoop shot underneath with a miss. Simmons gets the rebound. Follow won't go. And the rebound goes to Marvin Williams for Carolina's prize freshman. Much better job by State to get back defensively. Boy, May, pretty move, but so quick. <laughs> well, he just caught Simmons on the high side. When you play Sean May, knowing he's got that mobility either way, you've got to stay low and stay right behind him. aftermoff has got a nice stroke from outside. Can't hit that one. And now they'll reset with Ingen Atsor, the sophomore from Turkey. Being guarded by Felton. That sword got by, bounce pass to Hodge. Hodge blocked from behind by Rashad McCants. Ahead to David Noel. Simmons blocks him. State got back on defense that time. Two quality defensive plays right there, saving gold. And unusually, it was from behind that the blocks were made. Hodge against the double team. Got his own rebound and fouled. Fouled by Marvin Williams. That's number one on the freshman. ESPN Original Entertainment presents a new series, Tilt. You're playing poker, they're playing you. The first three episodes, Tilt, presented by Toyota, available on ESPN HD tonight at 9 Eastern, right after our game. I'll be honest with you, I've only seen two of those three. Got to hustle back and catch the middle one. Oh, it's worth it, no question. Your boy Michael Madsen doing a heck of a job. Keep in my interest. Williams blocked inside. NC State playing much better defense. Well, 
12-51 to go first half. Three-pointer too strong. Williams with a rebound off the miss by Gavin Grant. Shot still coming a little too quick as NC State trying to get it all back at once, not realizing that they're building. Williams, nice job of working his way inside and getting better position, draws the foul. You know, anytime you make a stop against a team like Carolina in this type of game, you're only down eight. Your possession is one where you have to make sure you get a high percentage shot. Now, you're going to be pressured, but as Julius Hodge did earlier, you have to use the aggressiveness of the defense against them. Going back door, looking for guys circling back. Right. Unusual for Marvin Williams uh, as a 6'9 freshman. He's the fourth best free throw shooter in the Atlantic Coast Conference this year. Has a great touch. And at 86.4, the third best freshman numbers ever in the ACC. Well, I'll tell you what. This is the reason why North Carolina, in my opinion, has the best starting five in America, because Marvin Williams will be starting for any other Isn't team it? in America. <laughs> That's right. If he's not in the starting five, they got the best five. He's a tremendously talented player. Well, his full name is Marvin Gage Williams, so as a freshman, he knows what's and going he can on. carry it all. Oh, that's beautiful. I love it. I love it. Brackman wants the ball inside. Instead, they go cross court to Hodge, and it's an air ball. Boy, Julius Hodge, so tentative on that one. McCants back the other way. Noel McCants. Well, a little fortunate for North Carolina there as the ball was tipped right to the right guy, but they made it work, 20 to 8. Well, Mike, you make a great point about the indecision. That's where you make mistakes against this Carolina team. When they're overplaying you, when they're really getting up, if you're indecisive, they'll get deflections and they're out running. NC State really needs a bucket, and Tony Bethel gets it. He has four. It's 20 to 10. NC State trying to get back on defense. North Carolina really pushing. That was Quentin Thomas who lost the ball out of bounds. Got a timeout, 11-21 to go. First half of play from North Carolina. Well, the Tar Heels have doubled up the Wolf Pack, and in the pregame warm-up, you know, we had a chance to watch some of the big men for Carolina work on the finish, and they're using a medicine ball. That blue ball is a heck of a lot heavier than a regular ball, and here you see guys powering up. You see the difference in weight, and the drill is to help you work on the finish, on strength to the basket, and in a game situation, it's Sean May right here using that strength, that upper body strength, to get to the basket. So a tremendous job of practicing what you do in a game. That's the essence of fundamental basketball. May triple team and follow, but J.J. Reddick can shoot threes with that. He probably could. His range might only be like 22 feet instead of 30 feet. Foul was on Jordan Collins. He's in for the first time. The senior from Hyattsville, Maryland, and the heels We'll shoot the one and one. May will go to the line. His conditioning dramatically improved over a year ago. Oh man, you can look at his body and see, obviously he's a lot more sculpted than he was even when he came in his freshman year, obviously. But, you know, it has done a tremendous amount of benefit to his overall game. He's getting up and down the floor better. He's rebounding better, not just getting the rebounds and dropping his hands, but he goes and gets the range rebounds from one side of the lane to the other. To me, that's the test of a good rebound. And work with some of the track coaches on improving not only his conditioning, but his speed. Did a lot of drills that will actually help make you faster. Although he could put one of those medicine balls in his pocket and run <laughs> up and down. That's a lot of the corner for three. Can't do it. May lost it momentarily. So that tremendous burst of speed. And this is an offensive foul against North Carolina away from the ball. And that's going to be on Jawad Williams pushing off. It's his second. Well, when everybody's getting easy baskets in the paint, Jawad Williams wants to get in there. And here he is using his left arm, kind of swinging it to hold Eftimov off. You know, that's been a point of emphasis now 
for the last two or three years using a swim move and other arm movements to try to free yourself down in the post. The officials don't want that anymore. You know, you got to learn how to use your hips and your shoulders. I'm not sure Eftemoff wasn't as guilty. Well, the guilty one is the one who gets caught. That's what I've always heard. Poor pass inside by Grant picked off. Scott with a miss, but May is there with a follow. You know, Herb Seven Sendek, points for May. I'm sorry, Mike. Herb Sendek has to be upset with the fact that he can get one defender back to defend, but no one's following. Carolina's beaten him to the punch. Bethel had the open three, then had a layup and kicks it out to Eftemoff. Loose ball saved by State. You know, that's the part of the game I still don't understand. You have a layup and you throw it back out for a 20-footer? Yeah. <laughs> NC State is 0 for 7 from long range. Bethel breaks the drought. They really challenged him to shoot that one. He was wide open. Nobody came at him. 23-13. When will North Carolina's long bench start to have an effect? Williams trying to back in. Kicks it back up to Scott. 12 on the shot clock. Good defense that time. Aftermath really stood his ground. Well, you mentioned the Carolina bench, but as long as NC State can control and command the tempo, you know, the bench, as well as stamina, doesn't really play a factor. Bethel tries to make it two in a row. Can't. May with a rebound over the back of Gavin Grant. Four boards for May here in the first 11 minutes. Scott, no-look pass. Got a little fancy. Hodge on the run. Good pass by Julius Hodge. And the basket goes to Grant. His first bucket, it's 23-15. State certainly playing hard, and they've cut the deficit back to eight. Well, it all begins on the defensive end, and they've strung together three stops and able to convert on the other end. Dalton has become more of an offensive threat this year. Scott's always been a good long-range shooter, missed that. Bethel with a rebound. Hodge was ahead of the pack. Bethel didn't want to take the chance. There's a dangerous pass, and there's the pick. Noel, showtime! That gets the crowd on its feet. Well, I tell you what, it couldn't come at a less opportune time for State. Just when they had a rhythm going, that turnover was just an unforced one. Grant just couldn't handle a good pass. Gavin Grant was really bailed out on that. He took a bad angle to get to the basket. Ends up getting a foul on Melvin Scott. Right there, easy pass turns into, I guess a 10, wouldn't you give him one? Oh, absolutely, so with the Russian judge. And it's 25-15 heels. Well, in case you're wondering where Julius Hodge is, really being blanketed defensively, still making things happen, making other people better. Terrific pass there to Bethel, into the, out of the double team, I should say. And then in the fast break situation, does a nice job of finding Gavin Grant for the layup. Julius Hodge is one of those kinds of guys that understands if he's not shooting the ball, if he's being doubled, there's somebody else that's capable of getting it done, and he's going to find a way to play a part. Grant, the 6'7 freshman out of the Bronx, as we mentioned, the same school with Bruce Hodge, who was last year's ACC Player of the Year. And when you ask people about who makes the all ACC team this year, Julius Hodge isn't mentioned in the first eight or nine by most people. Well, that's pretty interesting, too, because his numbers are almost the same as yep. they were last year. So it's not a criticism of Hodge. No. But there are some guys like Chris Paul, J.J. Reddick, having absolutely terrific years. There is the seventh turnover for North Carolina State, and Grant has thrown away a couple of easy passes, and he'll come out of the ballgame. Pickett, of course, is gone. So is Duhon. 
Hodge, the player of the year a season ago. He's third in the ACC in scoring. He's in the top ten in several other categories. His number's slightly better than anything he put up a year ago. But there are so many great players in this league. I would not want the responsibility of picking the first five or even the first ten. Well, you took a look at one of those guys that you may want to think about. Jawad Williams, leading scorer on this team. And he's an absolutely consistent player on both ends of the floor. Doesn't get the same type of notice as some of his teammates. But if you look at the tools, he's got it. Eftemoff, who was just such an outstanding fundamental player, has that great stroke from outside. Hit that one. McCants cut off by Eftemoff, and McCants will be called for pushing off with that free arm. That's one on McCants. Well, here's the All-ACC team from last year, and it was pretty tough to, to argue with uh, those selections. Who are your picks for this year? Well, obviously, Chris Paul and J.J. Redick and yep. Sheldon Williams. Those are the three guys that I think deserve to be on that, hands down. Afterwards, <laughs> I'm not altogether sure. I think you can talk about Jawad Williams because of this team doing what it's doing and his consistency, as well as Rashad McCants. Um, you know, you go down the list, Jared Felton. Jack. Ray Felton is another guy that you can speak of. And yeah, he doesn't have the scoring numbers, no. but seven assists a game. Jared Jack Gray from Wake Forest. He's an exceptional player. You know, I'd say, again, if he continues to streak in leading the team, although a little down against Clemson, you can talk about Nick Caner Medley, Sherrod Ford. You know, guys whose numbers are kind of climbing a little How bit. about May from North Carolina? Or Williams from Wake Forest, who's done a brilliant job in the middle. Let's just pick the first 15 and be done with it. Well, I know there are three that should be there for sure, without argument. Eftemoff kicks it out to Bethel. 28-18, poor pass thrown away by Atzor. The lob to Manuel. North Carolina makes you pay. NC State has to be so much better at not turning it over, which is their game. But you know what? With all the turnovers, with the dunks on the other end, NC State's still only down by 10. And Brackman showed a lot of patience on that possession. Got the basket. Young man's an outstanding baseball player as well. And there is the range of Marvin Williams, the guy who's going to rebound with anybody and hits the big bucket from the outside. The lead goes to 13. He has eight points off the bench. Well, again, the other Williams, Marvin Williams, who will ultimately be the man on this Tar Hill team. If he sticks around, which I hope he does. Bethel quickly got his own rebound, and then there's Simmons with a foul. Simmons has four. Cedric Simmons has come in and given his team a lift with block shots, a couple of baskets. But you can't play behind this guy that deep in the paint. May using what's left of that big body to make space inside. 35-22, May with nine first half points. Another turnover. Felton, pretty pass to May, couldn't handle it, then turns, missed the shot, but will draw the foul. A moment ago, fast break situation. This is the athleticism of Carolina. Carolina. North Carolina State can get back defensively, but they can't battle with the athleticism, nor the strength inside. You play behind Sean May, particularly now that he's mastered post play, you're in trouble. You got to play along the side. You got to have pressure on the ball. That's going to help you defend the young man. At 9 Eastern, ESPN2 will televise the network's first ever Division III regular season college basketball game. Grinnell College against the Buccaneers of Beloit. Great hoop action tonight at ESPN2 at 9. And Grinnell College will use a two-platoon system. They'll substitute five guys at once. They're averaging 124 points a game. Well, you know the philosophy. They want to get up a shot every 12 seconds. <laughs> they want to get the ball back. 
in 12 seconds. <laughs> Take 30 more shots than your opponent? Come on. Now, Hodge with Manuel in his face and can't score. You gotta love it. Oh, it's entertaining. And North Carolina gets the three out of Felton, and they get their biggest lead at 39-22. Julius Hodge, I don't know what is off with his shot, but he has certainly lost confidence in it. Well, I'll tell you, what's off with his shot is the harassing North Carolina defense. And a moment ago, I talked about with all the turnovers, NC State only down 10. That was a bit of a comfort zone because they were within reach. But now, Carolina's just getting away from him. And I think Herb Sendak really now has cause to be concerned. Brackman with a miss out of the corner. Hodge gets the loose ball. And then the jumper by Grant. Grant has four. Look how fast they push it back. Manuel double team. Missed the shot, draws the foul. This is almost kind of a Grinnell philosophy. Yes, it is. <laughs> Take it out Every of the net. 12 seconds. Heck, we're not waiting that long. We're going to get it up and down in five seconds. It's 39-24. Eels. Dave Rev sitting in the studio, along with Doug Gottlieb, coming up on the UPS Halftime Report. We'll give you the very latest on the NHL lockout. Also play a little ACC factor fiction. ACC thoughts from you? Well, I think that North Carolina, kind of a reckoning once again. We saw what they did to Virginia, now to cross-state rival NC State. And then they have a three-game road trip, so it's important that the, that the Heels keep this run going because they got some tough games coming up, especially on the road. There you have it, a sneak preview of what's coming up at the break. We'll see you there. 39-24, North Carolina with a 15-point lead, only 3.26 to go, and it's it's run and gun, Len. Well, basketball is a game of transition. You got to go from offense to defense or defense to offense, and Carolina does it better than anyone, and this is really a thing that's planned. You know, you work on, once the ball turns over, right here, you work on getting out in the lane. Guys going down each side. And that's how it's done. You have to be able to go to transition as quickly as possible. Ball in the middle and get guys out in the lane. Jackie Manuel misses both free throws. When Roy Williams took over, he said Jackie Manuel was the guy who does what I ask more than anybody else on this team. And that's why he really liked him. He subjugated his offense totally to do what Roy Williams wanted. And it made him a much better player. Now here's a guy right here with the ball that's become more team-oriented than I've ever seen in his career. Although yeah. right now, he's just trying to make something happen. Shot clock at 16. McCants gets it back. Knocks down the three on the assist from Williams. And it's 42-24. to 24. Backdoor cut, scores with the left hand. Good movement that time. Hodge has a half a dozen, very quietly. North Carolina does not make a lot of mistakes on offense and turn it over, giving the other team easy baskets either. That fouls on Julius Hodge. That's his second. ESPN Original Entertainment presents a new series, Tilt. You're playing poker. You, they're playing you. The first three episodes, Tilt presented by Toyota and available on ESPN HD tonight at 9 Eastern, right after our game. Mike, you make an excellent point. Carolina doesn't turn it over in critical times during the game. And more importantly, they lead the nation in assists, 22 assists a game. So they're sharing the ball. And as I mentioned, when you have a unit as tough as they are, they're an awful lot of weapons, a very diverse offensive group. All right, why is the uh, assist number so important? Well, what it means is that you're not, your offense is not stagnant. It means that if you're going to give up the ball, you get guys who will move without it as well as guys who will penetrate and try to create for other people. You know, you're going to get the best possible shot you can get. And, of course, it also means that you're fast-breaking constantly. 
Good ball movement there by NC State, but good interior defense by North Carolina. The 10th turnover for the Wolfpack, and we're under two minutes to go in the half. The lead has grown to 18. Noel is in number 34. Felton cut off the baseline, a lot of contact. Three-pointer, and Williams bucket makes it a 21-point margin, and Williams has come off the bench with 11. Well, again, it's 6-9 among the top freshmen, if not the top freshmen in America. And you expect him to be a banger, 11 points a game, 7 rebounds. But he shoots coming into this game 44% from beyond the arc. Will he stay around? Oh, you know, I like I said, I hope so because I watch his game. He still has something to learn. And you only do that by playing. And I'm not sure he would get nearly enough time right. on the pro level as he would in college to perfect his game. Nice rebound by Cedric Simmons there. And look at the uh, the eye of the tiger for that young man. I mean, that is focus right there. Total focus. Not even blinking. During the time we've been speaking, he didn't even blink. Three-point play the old-fashioned way, and it's 47 to 29. Williams, the uh, first guy off the bench, and what a deep team North Carolina has this year. One of the reasons a lot of people just convinced of the most talented team in the country. And now McCant wheels into the lane and hits this to lead back to 20. And Julius Hodge getting a little breather, but seeing something he doesn't like right now. I guess the second half is a double-edged sword. You either say, we got to play another one against these yeah. guys, or you have a chance to redeem yourself. Good kick-out pass and a three-pointer by Grant, who appeared to be fouled after he made the shot as well. Grant's a good-looking freshman. He hustles back. To take nothing away from Illinois, I think the way Carolina's rolling right now, those two meet on a neutral floor. It's all about the depth, the bench, the size, and the strength, and the ability to fast break. Carolina can match the Illinois fast break, but yeah. I would definitely pay to see that game. Or so would I. Williams again from the outside, May, offensive rebound. May again. Got it. At the buzzer. Basket counts, and why not? 51 first half points for the nation's leading scoring team and they shoot 69 percent well again it's all about perseverance the wide open three but sean may just battling if at first you don't succeed do it again look at the guys flying in there again continually hitting the offensive glass ball loses his hand before the light goes Score at halftime, 51-32 heels. Let's join Dave Revson in the studio for the UPS Halftime Report. Dave? Thank you, Mike. It is the UPS Halftime Report. Doug Gottlieb joins me momentarily as the Tar Heels rolling in Chapel Hill. Meanwhile, negotiations continuing in a last-ditch effort to save the NHL season. ESPN The Magazine's E.J. Raddick reporting a team owner requesting anonymity said he expects the season to be canceled either later today or tomorrow. We will keep you updated if anything happens tonight. As expected, Emmett Smith, the NFL's all-time leading rusher, calling it quits today. The 35-year-old Smith finishes with 18,355 rushing yards. And Titans coach Jeff Fisher, a USC alum, wants to talk to Trojans offensive coordinator Norm Chow about Tennessee's coordinator job. He's looking for a successor to Mike Heimerdinger, who left for the Jets job. Coming up, it was just about everyone's preseason national player of the year. Doug tells you whether or not Chris Paul is his ACC player of the year. That plus the best of the best from a week of jam, and it's the Thursday Pro Day. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by T-Mobile. Get more minutes, more features, more service. Welcome to the UPS Halftime Report. Carolina appears well on its way to going 11-0 at home, up 19 at the half. Rashad McCants leading the way with 15 for the Tar Heels, part of Throwdown Down Thursday. This is the UPS Halftime Report. Dave Revson alongside Doug Gottlieb. Time to play a little ACC Factor Fiction. We start 
with the other team from down on Tobacco Road, or one of the other teams. Oh, down you went, you went the other team, didn't yes, you? Yes, exactly. Uh, the, uh, the Duke Blue Devils, fact or fiction, Duke will finish in the ACC top two. Now that's fiction, and that's fiction because, look, when you look at Duke's schedule, it's backloaded. And remember, that's not taking anything away from what Duke has done thus far this season. In many people's minds, in my mind, I think they've kind of overachieved. But two games against Georgia Tech, two against Carolina. Carolina's pretty good, I would say, if you watch the first half. Maryland on the road, they already lost to Maryland. And then Virginia Tech, which is quickly becoming a difficult place for people to play. I mean, Duke has uh, overachieved, especially because of their lack of depth. Thus far in the season, they've played very well. But I think when you look at the backloading, this is the most difficult conference in the country. They won't finish in the top two. I think expectations were really high after the undefeated start. Right. But as you pointed out, a lot of that had to do with the schedule. Okay, this kind of goes hand in hand. Chris Paul is the ACC Player of the Year, fact or fiction? Well, I think that's fiction because Chris Paul, and let's not take away his value to Wake Forest, he had a great night last night against Duke, but two previous games, eight points, really struggled on the road against Georgia Tech. And for my money, the guy who's played better than anybody in the ACC is J.J. Reddick. Think about this. He had eight points against NC State. Since then, 28 versus Virginia, 21 versus Miami, 31 at Florida State. 20 in the loss to Maryland, 29 against Virginia Tech, and then 33 last night. I mean, this team comes and goes as J.J. Redick plays. He's been phenomenal, and I think that he, he's the ACC Player of the Year at this point in the season. So you believe that Duke would suffer more by losing Redick than Wake would suffer by losing Paul? Well, yeah, I, I think look at the numbers. I think Wake would survive probably getting the NCAA tournament. I don't know what would happen with Duke. He's averaging 36 minutes a game, leaving the conference and scoring 93% from, uh, from the free throw line. I mean, this guy's having an amazing year. A fact or fiction, Virginia Tech, ACC's biggest surprise. Oh, that's absolutely a fact. I mean, Virginia Tech, did, did you think that they wouldn't be the last place team in the league? I thought they'd be the last place team in the league. And Seth Greenberg, what a marvelous job. Remember, this team lost to VMI earlier in the year. They've now won six of their last seven games. They beat Georgia Tech, a Final Four team that returned four out of their five stars. I know B.J. Elder didn't play. They beat Georgia Tech at Georgia Tech. Surprise of the year, team of the year, coach of the year in the ACC. It's all Virginia Tech. It has been very impressive. The early preseason schedule non-conference wasn't so hot. They lost to VMI. They had some questionable game, so the RPI isn't so good, but, sure. man, they, uh, they have been very I mean, if they make the NIT, that's a great that story. That is an accomplishment. I certainly agree with you. Lots more to come on the UPS Halftime Reports, including the Thursday Throwdowns, the best jams of the week, and also check out this shot. Wait till you learn what was at stake right here. This Halftime Report is delivered by UPS. What can Brown do for you? Welcome back to the UPS Halftime Report. Dave Revson along with Doug Gottlieb. It has been all Tar Heels in the first half. Jackie Manuel throwing down there. Two of his six points. 51-32. Carolina, time for the Thursday throwdown. Double him, so he takes the shot. Oh, Ager sky high. I think you'd call that one a hammer dunk. The big fella with the putback. Yeah, there's a slam. Now that's with feeling. That's the duck in the night. I don't know where that grainy video was from. That was pretty good. I don't know. He jumped right over him. But hey, uh, where's the assist? Where's the three-point shots? Throw down Thursday. Boy, I, I got to tell you, I, I don't like this. I don't no, like this The point deal. guard. The point guard always obsessing about the assist. But yeah. you know what? We've got the three-point shot for you. This one, Monday, it's Guilford and Randolph-Macon. Division three ball in North Carolina. Check this out. Guilford down two. Last second, they get the rebound, and Jordan Snipes hits it from 86 feet to win the game. Unbelievable. Then, TV station WFMY goes back out there to see if he can recreate it. Took him 15 shots, but he did it. So, uh, I mean, the guy's a high school quarterback, so you know he's got the arm to get it down there. But still, that is about as improbable as it gets. Well, you know, it just frustrates me to no end when I see guys miss free throws. 
Yeah, I'm sure it does. <laughs> Not as much as it frustrated Eddie Sutton. Anyway, as we move on, we have the second half coming your way. David Noel in North Carolina cruising over their rivals. They lead it by 19. This halftime report is delivered by UPS. What can Brown do for you? ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by American Airlines. We know why you fly. We're American Airlines. 51-32. North Carolina leading North Carolina State at the half. The heels 17-2. North Carolina State really in the midst of a struggle here. They have lost six of their last nine ball games, and they have a hideous stretch their schedule coming up this does not look good Lynn no it doesn't and they've tried NC State has really tried to control the tempo but when you look at NC Carolina really with the way they've been playing defensively and it's all been about transition basketball eight steals 15 deflections three blocks take a look at the clock now how quickly they get the ball up the floor after the turnover once again they go from defense to offense as quick as anybody in the country and it's all about getting that ball loose and getting people to make that decision and in transition again 19 points off of turnovers for Carolina state is average about a little more than three passes per possession now you know they're attempting to control the tempo but three passes is not enough Carolina's had an awful lot to do with that in the steals and the deflections eighth time this year that the Heels have scored better than 50 points in the first half. And they did it on 65% shooting. While the Wolfpack, which really needs that outside shooting, hit only three out of 14 from long range. Beckel, shot clock at three, and he's got to do something. Kicks him into the corner. Grant! That was a pretty good possession. They wound it all the way down, and then Grant hit a three. Now, once you got that rhythm, you got to play defense, and there you go. Give them some transition up. Screened off. Bethel tried to block off Sean May, and May said, get it out of here. Manual, good feed to Williams. Williams has it rejected. Very physical start to the second half. Well, excellent defensive plays on both ends. And how about Sean May? You don't think of him as a leaper. That shows you his change in conditioning. He got down there and blocked that shot. Eftemoff kept it alive off the miss from Simmons, but Simmons couldn't save it. Well, look at Sean May running the floor. He's got the angle. Oh. He expected Julius Hodge to have a little more rise on that when trying to dunk it, and May just runs the floor. That upper body strength. We saw the medicine ball exercise in the first half. Something that Carolina does in pregame warm-ups. It pays dividends to get you up in the air. The end of his first two years, Sean May, at the end of games, could not get his hand above the rim. Literally, at 6'9", he was that far out of shape. He can get it above the rim now. And at full speed. When you lose that weight, it's like taking that piano off your back. <laughs> Carrying a clarinet now. <laughs> He's beating people with it. 51 35. Backdoor cut by Ephraim off the bounce pass, knocked out of his hands, but a foul. Well, you talk about the growth of a player, and Sean May was all about conditioning. Pretty good as a freshman, but at 272, you can't be that effective, as you mentioned, Mike, particularly at the end of the game. Sophomore year dropped a little more weight, got even more effective, and obviously this year, that 255, he's running like a young deer out there. Well, he started with a broken bone in his foot. It was just so tough for him to get any conditioning out of that. And that's probably why his weight ballooned up as well. Right. You know, hard to work in practice and certainly in rehab because you can't run. 17 and a half minutes to go in the game. Eftemoff has it knocked out of bounds. The kick will put a fresh 35 back on the shot clock. And it's just another deflection by Carolina. We mentioned they had 15 in the first half. 
you know, what that does, it really makes the passer hesitant, thinking that the defense is going to get a hand on it. And when you're indecisive like that, the defense, in fact, comes up with some type of deflection of steel. Bethel driving on Felton. And fouled by Felton. That'll be number one on the junior from Latta, South Carolina. Felton missed that opening game against Santa Clara, which the Heels lost. Played in the Summer League, which had been uh, valid for participation for years and years. He didn't know it was no longer that way. And they they didn't try to hide it or anything. They admitted the fact that he played in the uh, in the Summer League at the beginning and said, you know, cut us a break. Nobody knew. And, of course, nobody cut him a break. They suspended him for the first time. Fifty-one to thirty-seven, NC State has cut it back to fourteen points. Nice. McCants, nice dish off. McCants looking to pass something you could not say about him earlier in his career. We talk about the growth of the young man. That's one of the factors. The other is his commitment to playing defense. Just made him a better player and made his team a better team. The Wolfpack getting some good production out of Gavin Grant, the freshman, starting the second half. He's up to a dozen points in this game. McCants goes baseline, and he's held. Again, we talk about, I didn't like that move right there, but we talk about this move, drawing the defenders, three guys, surround Rashad McCants right there, and he recognizes the open man. Very unselfish basketball, but that last gesture right there, those are the types of things he needs to lose out of his yep. repertoire. Foul on Hodge was his third. May can't handle this. Take a look at the situation right here. A little bit of a scrum in there, but the previous gesture I'm talking about, right there, oh. there's no place for that now. And I know if Roy Williams sees this, there's going to be some stern talk going on. The boy Williams won't stand for that. Well, you know, every time you see somebody progress and you, you want to give them credit for progressing, and then something like that happens, it just goes back the other way. Yeah, it does. I mean, progress doesn't occur on a straight line, but he's old enough Good now point. and mature enough now to recognize that that's just not how you handle it. Mm. He'll get it. If it takes a lot of talking to, he'll get it. Maybe even a sit down now and then. But this is a class program, and it's been that way for as long as I can remember, beginning with Dean Smith and going forward. And oh, sure. And this program doesn't stand for that kind of but stuff. But you know, you got to be honest about it. Some guys never get it. No matter how many good people they're surrounded by, no matter how what the quality of the program that they're in, some individuals never get. It. Well, you know, the reason I give him the benefit of the doubt is because he's come this far in yep. this game. So yep. he can learn a little bit more. I'll give you that. It looked like it was off of NC State, ruled off of North Carolina. And 16 one to go in the game. The lead is back to 16. Bethel for three. Got it. Tony Bethel, the transfer from Georgetown, who was a point guard there for a couple of years after being a shooting guard in high school. Poor pass, Hodge with a steal. Williams gets back and commits the foul. We well, give Julius Hodge some credit. The last time he went out on a breakaway, got his luck, keeps coming back. This time draws the foul. North Carolina continues to hold on to a 13-point lead. We invite you to join ABC on Sunday. Al Michaels and Hubie Brown will be in Houston. Yao Ming and Tracy McGrady will lead the Rockets against the Lakers. Coverage begins Sunday at 3 Eastern on ABC, home of the NBA Finals. And this place could be considered the home of the NBA <laughs> yeah. with so many great players whose jerseys are hanging right here. And you know, you look at James Worthy, Phil Ford, Anton Jameson, among others. Those are the ones I can see. 
some pretty good ones. Hodge misses a free throw. Hodge has gone from an 82% free throw shooter to 63% this year. I mean, that is a dramatic decline. He's one of the best free throw shooters in the ACC. And now he's at the bottom of NC State's stat list. And you look at his form and you wonder what's going wrong because yeah. of the rotation, bending his knees, the delivery, everything looks fine. Scott getting his first minutes here in the second half in the backcourt with Felton. Backs out on Grant. Lob into May. Nice feed from Felton, who leads the ACC in assist at 7.2. May really extending his defense to nearly 30 feet. And how many times has Carolina gotten a finger on the ball? That's a deflected. Even if they don't get possession, it deters the passer from making that pass. Grant really forced that shot, and May hustles into the corner to get the rebound. Felton blows right by Hodge, kicks it out to Scott. The shooter misses the three, but the tip comes out. Emmanuel corrals the rebound. Scott with another chance. Got that one. Can't leave good long-range shooters wide open twice in a row. Scott with his first basket. The lead is back to 17. So just as soon as NC State makes the challenge, North Carolina extends the lead again. Fourteen thirty-two to go in the game. North Carolina leads by 17. Mike Patrick, Glenn Elmore, our entire ESPN crew with you from Chapel Hill. And here is that tremendous balanced scoring attack with Williams, McCants, May, and Felton all in double figures. Two of them already in double figures tonight. McCants with 15, May with 14. Felton, in addition to those five points, already has eight assists. And Marvin Williams off the bench with 11 and 3. Well, that's five guys in double figures for Carolina, and, you know, they're all getting it done. Nobody really averaging a whole lot of minutes by comparison. The most is Raymond Felton at 29 minutes a game. So that's the depth and the efficiency of the Tar Heels. There's a runner by Marvin Williams. He's getting more and more minutes, and the lead's back to 19. Williams has 13 points. Simmons kicks it out. Three too strong. Here comes Felton ahead to Williams. 15 points for the freshman. Hodge, nice baseline drive, then got trapped underneath. Got his own rebound and had it knocked out of bounds off of the heel. Fast break right here. We talked about a 10 earlier for David Noel. And look at the our hand behind the head. Right there. Hand behind. Look, Ma, one hand. Don't you wish you could have done this? Wouldn't that have been fun for you guys? Yeah, but they hadn't invented the breakaway rim, so we had well, a lot of game stoppage. Think yeah. about guys like David Thompson, among others. Yeah, we'd have had six-hour games. Broken backboard. And guys like me, silly enough to go up and try to block them, too. Yeah, that's true. In transition, hasn't been a contest. Speaking of block shots, Tom Burleson. Big Burl. My arch enemy, but yeah. a really good friend. You know, when he walked in here and you got up to, uh, to shake hands with him, hard to see somebody who was a half a foot taller than you are. You know, it's just still hard to believe. Well, people don't ever give me slack about the fact that Burl had, you know, one of the greatest games in ACC tournament history. Yeah, the best I, game of his life. Right, and I happen to be guarding him. I mean, prior to that, <laughs> prior to that, he really never got the best of me. But in that right. game, he had a terrific game. People forget the guy eight inches taller than me. That's right, and I believe and good too. And and I don't do this to bedevil you. I believe he had 38 and 17 in That's that game. Okay. But probably in the combination of the other games that he played against, he didn't have 38 and 17. You're right. 
But at that time, you know, we always had to worry about David Thompson, always tried to help oh, yeah. him. And Burl at 7-4, when he set up low like Sean May is doing tonight, <laughs> not a lot you can do at 7-4. Yeah, except watch it. But he's a terrific guy, raising three sons, putting them through college. He's done a terrific job. Great feed to Noel. The spread is back to 20. Those were certainly the glory days in North Carolina State basketball history. Burleson and Thompson and Monty Cal. North Carolina State could really use a couple of great possessions, and they're not getting them. Scott ahead, missed. Beams waiting for somebody to come up and try to get a piece of it. Nobody ever did. Yeah, he took off a step too soon. Could have gotten one more step to the basket, laid it on the backboard. With all the shot blocking going on, I don't blame guys for looking over their shoulders. Boy, Grant's a good-looking freshman out of the Bronx. Good drive there. Grant has 14 points tonight. May drives on Simmons and draws a foul. Speaking of drawing, look at the attention Sean May draws. There's the double team right there. And he just drops a nice little bounce pass as Hodge came over. Nobody rotates to his man. The NC State pretty much out of whack defensively on that last play. You talk about, you know, if it wasn't for bad luck, you'd have no luck. Right. They make a good defensive play and deflect it, goes right into Sean May's hands and gets to the free throw line. Just May not tonight. Free throw. Just not tonight, Herb. No, North Carolina State will be losing seven of its last ten games. And they haven't even played the hardest part of their ACC schedule yet. And will drop to 13-8 and eight overall. This is barring a major miracle. They're down 20. And not showing too many signs of coming back against the number two ranked team in the country on a foreign court. I mean, the deck is stacked. Speaking of tilt coming up at 9 o'clock. <laughs> one and done, too. You can't go to the river. The <laughs> <laughs> cards have already been dealt. Yes, sir. Williams fouled on the way up. Eleven minutes, forty seconds to go in the game. North Carolina by twenty. ESPN HD and ESPN Two HD are the places to be this year. We will have six thousand hours of high definition programming. If you don't have it, you're missing out. Contact your local cable or satellite provider. Tell them you want ESPN HD. Rockets and Timberwolves on Friday. Notre Dame-Syracuse Saturday. Big Monday. Villanova against St. John's. Don't miss it. Speaking of not missing, Carolina is shooting almost 63% from the field. 25 baskets on 17 assists. So you talk about moving the ball and distributing it. Marvin Williams now with 16 points, going for a career high. Freshman here. Doesn't play like a freshman. Exactly, on a team like this, halfway through the season. Nothing but upside. We've got the freshman Quentin Thomas in at the point. He's number 11. Another deflection. And then Noel knocked out of bounds. And the ball will go to North Carolina. No foul. Geez, a lot of contact by Adsor. And what has North Carolina done at home? Just undefeated, averaging a point and a half under 100. They've hit the century mark six times this year, and they're winning by 30 points a game. Pretty dumb. Wide open with Chance out of the corner. Williams, offensive rebound. Blocked, got it back again. Blocked again in a foul. And Mike, that in a nutshell is Jawad Williams. 
you know, he came to this program, and in his freshman year, sophomore year, it was down. He perseveres, and in the last two years, he has been tremendously consistent for this team. And it's all about his perseverance. And quiet as it's kept, he's got 21 games consecutively a double figure. And nobody really talks about the guy. Yeah. And he is, uh, in my mind, he is, he is the most valuable player on this team. He does so many things. He does them all quietly. At the end of the day, you look at the stat sheet, and he's been a huge contributor. And he's 72 to 48. And he is one of those guys, when you talk about the mystery of this year's All-ACC team, I'd give him strong consideration. Oh, yeah. Because of all those things and the fact that he's a senior and his perseverance through the years. Should be rewarded. Absolutely. Well, that one was knocked off at North Carolina State. They get a break. They'll get the basketball. Two of them went for it. They looked like both of them got it. Bethel. NC State just can't cut into this huge lead. They got it down to 13 at the start of the half. Shot clock now down to three. Bethel is bailed out by a foul 25 feet away from the bucket with three seconds on the shot clock. Well, fresh from the state. Yep. Quentin Thomas trying to go up there and earn some more minutes, although I don't know how many more minutes there are playing behind Ray Bright. But you won't do it doing that. You've got to be aware of the shot clock and the disadvantage you have. The defender of the... Uh, Guys dribbling the basketball at that point. It's all in your favor. Hodge. Julius Hodge has been a non-factor tonight. Finally got his dunk, though. He has been attacking the glass hard, attacking the rim hard. But as I mentioned earlier with Herb Sendek, it just isn't his team's night. Juggernaut is what they've come to play. McCants goes down the lane, fouled by Simmons. That will be four on the freshman. Check if they're going to call it three on him. Yeah, you talk about Julius Hodge, and again, it, he's been trying to give the effort. Look at the sweat on his brow. A lot of people look at him, four-year player in his senior year right now. Maybe he should have gone to the NBA last year. You know, had good numbers. He was the ACC player of the year, so by comparison, he had great numbers. Right. But the fact is, you look at his numbers this season, and there's very little difference. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with that. And the thing that I mentioned before, Mike, is his numbers are still consistent. I think from a draft standpoint, the pros know what he can do. Sure. I don't think his draft status has changed one bit. But the fact that he's not in consideration for ACC Player of the Year has a lot more to do with the year Chris Paul and J.J. Redick and Sheldon Williams have had. Couldn't agree with you more. Among others, than it is Julius Hodge falling off in it. Hodge backing in, got to the baseline, got that bucket. And don't forget the promise that he made to his mother, and his mom held him to it. He told her he was going to get a degree before he left. And she said, uh, I don't see the degree yet. And he came back for his senior year. Got to give him a lot of credit for that. You know what, in the grand scheme of things, that promise is more valuable than any contract he signs in the NBA. I don't care what anybody tells him. You bet, I agree with you. You're not going to find an agent who will agree with that, but then uh, who cares? North Carolina in the bonus at the 928 mark, already leading by 21. McCants with 16 points tonight. 17, and he'll get another free throw. He had only had 20 points once in his last 12 ball games that's how unselfish he had been and hadn't been complaining about it something you couldn't have said about him previously either if he wasn't getting his everybody knew about it. oh again that's the maturity level and also i think it's a tribute to his teammates who i'm positive have had something to do with him falling in line sure and buying into the program he said seven out of eight from the free throw line. The lead has grown to 23. Well, if you're NC State, 
you have to say, all right, we're three and five now with really the meat of our ACC schedule coming up. What are we going to do to get better? They'll get a couple of guys back from the injury list. How much difference is that going to make? Well, I tell you what they have to do is they have to learn how to win at home. Seven of their first 11 ACC challenges have been on the road. So they've got a number of home games upcoming in mid-February. they got one, two, three, four out of their last five ACC games are at home. So it's not out of the realm of possibility they can climb up the ladder, but they've got to be able to win at home. Right now, pending Georgia Tech coming back from an, end of, uh, an injury riddled first two-thirds of the season. There are three teams fighting for the ACC championship. It's going to be North Carolina, Duke, and Wake. Excellent fast break again. Felton on the assist from McCann. Felton has seven points. The route is on, folks, at 77-52. Time now to take a look back on this date in college basketball history. It was a club occupied only by David Robinson and Roy Rogers. On this date, Arizona's Lauren Woods joined them. Inside, Woods with two rejections. Three rejections. Take that back to the cheap seats. Woods gets his hands on another one. We've had more rejections tonight than a patch for a single bar. Holy smokes. Ties the record for shots blocked in a game. 14. Coming up next Wednesday, by the way, after you saw all those shot blocks, Sheldon Williams, the great shot blocker, the landlord from Duke against Sean May, who's an outstanding shot blocker himself. Next Wednesday, Duke and North Carolina match number one for this year. Or two of the premier big men in the ACC, if not in the country. Say, I love going to the Pro Bowl in Honolulu. It's one of my favorite spots on earth, but I, I hate missing that game. Well, you get to see it in the afternoon. On I, yes, I will, and I'll be watching. Good follow inside as Jordan Collins gets his first bucket of the game. Collins in there playing the pivot and matched up with Sean May. Williams fadeaway jump shot will draw a foul. And we've got a timeout on the court with 7.45 to go from Chapel Hill. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Key Jewelers. Every kiss begins with K. Sonic, it's not just good, it's Sonic good. And Rock Green Light, 83 calories, 2.4 grams of carbs, 100% rock. Seven minutes and 45 seconds left. North Carolina cruising over our tribal North Carolina State, 77 to 54. Here are the ACC leaders on the boards. Sheldon Williams averaging a double-double. Brown at 9.3 and Sean May right behind at 9.2. Sean May tonight, 16 and 13. His 21st career double-double. He has had two games of 20 rebounds or more in his career. Guess how many Billy Cunningham had <laughs> at North Carolina? Uh, Billy Cunningham had 40. 12. Oh, 12? 12 20 rebound games. Oh, I thought you were talking about double figure no. scoring games. 20 that was a rebound game. 20. Well, he used to call him the kangaroo kid. Yes, sir. To jump off of this <laughs> cement in New York City so you know when you get to the softer wood here you can get some added elevation and yep. next week again it's going to be the battle Duke from Carolina 9 o'clock game hope you'll join us for that one this Duke does not have the depth that they had and they'll come in under man for that contest but as we saw against Wake Forest the other night Never count them out. They were down big time, and J.J. Redick led them back. Well, actually, actually, the thing that makes them more interesting, you talk about being undermanned, and 
A lot of people would think that Carolina has absolutely the advantage there, but they're going to Cameron this first game on the ninth. And Duke plays pretty well at home. Yes, they do. Hefto off, gives it up to Atsur. A couple of academic ACC performers. Both foreign born. Seven minutes to go. Been a tough night for NC State. Nice off-balance shot by Bethel. Bethel has 14 points. And one of the reasons it's been a tough night, as you saw just then, defensively, Carolina's so quick in the recovery. A guy goes back door, and they surround him. Dalton, a rare turnover. Emmanuel got back to block Bethel. Jackie Manuel can really elevate and some kind of defensive player. Well, you saw that one coming. And again, Carolina's just hungry. You see Felton cutting them off, and Manuel trailing the play. He got himself lined up, got his steps together. And they appreciate the defense. That's why you see Carolina team standing up. That's as good as an applause. And that's the reason Jackie Manuel is in there. He's not going to score much, but boy, he can play defense and he can rebound. Here's a hole on Manuel as he got a, a big handful of jersey trying to play defense that time. Well, you, you look at the guys out on the floor, particularly when Carolina tries to clamp down on you, overplay and deny. They're all long, long limbed, lean, quick. You know, you're talking about Manuel, Noel, Williams to a certain extent. You know, that's the formula for that time of extended defense. State trying to maintain that patience in its offense. Hodge throws this one away. Here come the heels trying to push it. Williams, nice dish to May. Partially blocked by Simmons. Felton saved it, then took his eye off of it and lost it at the last moment. At 9 Eastern, ESPN2 will televise the network's first ever Division III regular season college basketball game. Grinnell against Beloit. Tonight on ESPN2, Grinnell will substitute five guys at a time. They average 124 points a game. Just like Billy Tubbs' old Oklahoma teams, they don't care how many you get. They're going to get theirs. Yep, same thing with Paul Westhead and the Loyola Marymount crew that had Hank Gathers, Bo Kimball back in the 80s. The guys that used to do aerobics to stay in shape. <laughs> And they out they out conditioned everybody they played boy could they light it up Hodge with a nice runner piling up points but he's getting his points 13 right now after the outcomes already been decided Manuel fouled on the way in with 523 to go Picks up his fourth. And McCants took only six shots, made five. Well, that's the efficiency, as I mentioned before, of Carolina. So many opportunities in the open floor in transition on the fast break. Haven't had to play their half court very much. McCants also had four assists and three steals in this game. Talk about versatility, and Julius Hodges' name comes to mind. But you know, don't count out a guy like Rashad McCants, especially with the four assists, the steals out on the wing and inside the paint. Well, it'll be interesting to see what the fallout might be from that uh, gesture he made earlier in the game, an ill-advised move on his part, at best. I mean, look, at that you know, that's just a, a personal reflection, and you know he's a He's a nice young man, but people get carried away, and you got to learn how to control those emotions. I'm sure. You don't know who's watching. You know, that's the difference between, from an NBA draft standpoint, and going one spot or a lower spot. Because people translate attitude. Teron Downey had a similar gesture against Florida State for Wake Forest. Yes, we were there. 
And this is what we're talking about again at a point when a foul was called. It's just, you know, totally unnecessary. But again, you know, not to belabor the point, and hopefully we won't have to talk about it again. Right. But there's a learning curve to be scaled by Rashad McCants when it comes to that type of personal reflection, and that's a man that can teach him. We hope. Well, he'll certainly try. You know that. Hodge gets the roll on that, and with 4.49 to go in the game, the leads back to 19 points. assist for Raymond Felton, the ACC leader. What do you do? You play great defense. You just lose contact for a moment, and they're able to throw over the rim, throw over the defense and score. And Jawad Williams is not the only guy capable of doing that. That's what makes this team so tough. Absolutely. There's so many ways that they can score. Bethel gets a nice feed inside from Simmons. Again, look at the pressure and just... Pinpoint off a dime. Hodge nice loses catch. contact for a moment. Boy, that was not an easy catch either. Now these guys, I mean, not only are they bright basketball players, grasp this system very well, but they're athletes too. The two can go hand in hand. Yep, huh? absolutely. And that's when you got something. Yep. I think Bethel's really going to make a difference in this club. The two-year starter at Georgetown, transferred, just had a uh, some terrible physical problems earlier in the year, had the flu in December, had a reaction to antibiotics and all sorts of physical things went on. Lost a lot of weight. He's really just coming back now and being at full strength. I think he's really going to help this club in the last month and a half of the season. Yeah, I mean, he's lost a lot of time, but... He understands how to play, and he's getting back in the rhythm. This isn't one of those games that gives you rhythm. Felton, a great drive with 3.38 to go. The lead back to 21. Hodge wants it back from Bethel, a little two-man game. Bethel got caught up in the lane and is bailed out on the foul call. It's Throwdown Thursday in Chapel Hill, and the Heels doing most of the throwing down at home. Four sixty-three, number two, North Carolina, leading NC State by twenty-one. Shooting the Rock, presented by Rock Green Light, and fifty-seven percent for North Carolina tonight from the field. They came in already third in the NCAA, and they have jacked it up even further this evening. And you can see why that percentage is so high. They work at it in transition so often and then the question of the ball movement and the distribution the unselfishness and they are having a wonderful time at home tonight as they shoot for another 100 point effort noel Three NC State players were just sort of biding their time, and Noel rolled right by him. I'll tell you what, the NC State players are like me. You know, you see Carolina on television, you understand what they look like. These guys have seen them on video, but this year they just seem so much more explosive. Yeah. Boy, still a lot of hustle for the Wolfpack going after the ball, but Felton with that great speed got in there, made the steal, may have committed a foul before. Well, the electricity is there. Felton and his teammates know the crowd wants 100 points. They're trying to maximize their possession yep. to try to get to 100. It'll be the seventh time this season that they've reached the century mark. They lead the ACC and the nation in scoring. <laughs> I mean, Ray got a lot. He got a lot of that 
flat of that arm. You would think that this was like a three-point ball game right now. You would. Well, they've had a couple of down years, something that they're not used to in this area, and they are enjoying the comeback. Go ahead, Roy, smile. You know you want to smile. Even though you're sick, 102 fever. Simmons with a miss. Going to be tough to get to 100. The crowd is encouraging them to come on, step it up, let's shoot that ball. Felton kicks it into the corner, the three-pointer, no. Felton keeps it alive. 88-63. Roy Williams is going to go to his bench. Foul on Sean May as he stopped Brackman. And I tell you what, when you're up 25, you can afford to have a little bit of fun in retrospect. Remember earlier, Marvin Williams with the hand behind the head, look, my one hand slam. Of course, they're still talking about it on the bench. Quentin Thomas said, Coach, you didn't see that? I don't know if he wanted Coach to see that. Yeah, maybe not. When you're up 25, it's all good. Brackman, the freshman from Cincinnati, hits the free throw, and the starters will come out of the ball game to a standing ovation. And Marvin Williams, brilliant off the bench tonight. Ray Sean Terry is in. Wes Miller comes in. And a full house, very appreciative of the way the Heels have played again tonight and lead 88 to 65. Miller gets a good screen from Hooker and got the good dish inside. Carolina continuing to get outstanding play and Byron Sanders gets his name in the scorebook. Well, I guess I get to do the promo this time, huh? Because this tilt is over. <laughs> Coming up next, ESPN Original Entertainment presents a new series, Tilt. The first three episodes, you're playing poker, they're playing you. Tilt, presented by Toyota and available on ESPN HD. That's coming up next. And as we said, this one's over. How was that, Mike? I have officially been made obsolete. I no, don't, even, no, no, I no, don't no. even get to read the promos anymore, Len. So it's, uh, it's off to Hawaii. I'll see you in a couple of weeks. You're starting your vacation early, <laughs> even though you got to do the Pro Bowl. <laughs> Always a pleasure to work with you, my friend. We thought this might be a little closer, but North Carolina State with uh, two guys injured and not able to go to, and North Carolina has been doing this to people all year long. And they've been doing it in the ACC. Not even arguably, I think the numbers bear them out. The toughest conference in America, so you know where Carolina is. And as I said, seeing them in person has made a believer out of me. I've been on the bandwagon. But the explosiveness, the ability to play defense, the tenacity of this team, and you combine all of that with hot shooting, and they're just going to be tough to stop. This is this is a boulder rolling downhill right now. Yeah. Rayshon Terry got that jam. Here are the updated ACC standings, but keep in mind, the loss they suffered in the conference was at Wake Forest. And Wake Forest that day handled this team. And North Carolina at 7-1, Duke and Wake, both with two defeats in the conference. And as I said, I think the Cameron game will be a little tougher. The difference is obviously going to be the Carolina depth in my mind. But who do you can't like? count out the heart of J.J. Redick and his teammates. Who do you like North Carolina and Wake Forest neutral court? Put it this way, I like the over-under of be about 210. <laughs> but, yeah, I still like Carolina neutral court because Wake, as good as they are, has yet to demonstrate that they can guard the perimeter. Right. And Carolina, right now, you look at their perimeter shooters, the guys beyond the arc, several guys shooting over 40%. They've just got a lot of, lot of firepower. Well, we're so spoiled with press passes and everything, I don't even know what a ticket to a game like that would cost, but I tell you what, I'd pay my own money to see it. Well, at some point, it's going to happen. MCI Center, ACC Good tournament. Day. 
That could be a matchup. 9267. Yeah, that'll be a good one. But Georgia Tech should be healthy and rolling by then. And arguably, you'll have four of the top eight teams in the country, whether they're ranked there or not. A dominant win for North Carolina tonight. They will go to 18 and 2. 7-1 the ACC. Well, North Carolina State will fall to 3-5 and five in the conference and 13-8 and eight on the season. They will have lost seven of their last ten games with easily their toughest stretch coming up. Under 20 seconds. And Holly bounces one in. 95-69. Everything is going to fall tonight for the Heels. But it doesn't look like they're going to get to 100 in this one. It's about the only thing NC State prevented them from doing. Well, Herb Sendak obviously a little disappointed his team wasn't able to execute their game plan, which was to make Carolina work in the half court. They made them work. It just made it was Carolina made that work seem very easy yeah. with the deflections, getting the loose balls, getting out in transition. And once you score easy baskets, it makes the jump shots flow a lot easier. Hodge hits both free throws. And North Carolina has beaten North Carolina State 95 to 71. They made it look easy. The final margin, 24 points for Len Elmore and our entire ESPN crew. This is Mike Patrick. Thanks for watching, everybody. The final score, 95-71. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For more information, log on to ESPN.com. Let's go back to the studio and Dave Revson.